People, I have to share something with you about yesterday. Uh, two things happened. A very strange thing happened that the video cut off after a minute, and then it um, it um, it came back on again, but it came back vertical, and I don't know how that happened. Uh, so that's life. You know, I'm just uh, uh, an, an expert <laughs> with these things. So I. Then I had another situation at the end. Uh, when I tried to finish the video it, and post it, it only gave me 24 hours, it will be deleted. So it's only going to be up for another hour as far as I know. And I tried to copy it, which I always do, to download a copy for YouTube posting. But that didn't work because it only copied the video part as far as the break. And when it came back again, it was vertical, and that part did not come into the YouTube. It didn't, didn't get recorded. I couldn't copy it. So maybe one or two of you are very skilled with these things, and if you can get it in, within the next hour, it's still before 6 o'clock here. I'm not sure exactly what time. Let me look here. It's 12 minutes to 6. Uh, you still have time because about 15 or 20 minutes. I even skip this and go and see it and see if you can pull it down. And uh, because otherwise we're going to lose it because we don't have the full thing. But we do have the full recording on YouTube. So it's just a recording and not, um, it doesn't have the video part, which is kind of strange. So it did the video part up into the first minute when the video break happened. It came back in, but that part didn't get copied and it didn't go up on YouTube. So I apologize to all our YouTube viewers for that uh, difficulty. So let's get on with today's show. And that's life, you know, things happen. And so we also have very exciting things today because we have very great readings, uh, astonishing readings, really. Good morning. There's a very beautiful, uh, you guys are from Korea? Well, there, it's very difficult to speak with a lot of the East Asians because they uh, don't always speak English. Although I know a lot of Koreans who do. I think they're Koreans, that's my guess. And they've been out here the whole time. They were here before I came out to swim this morning. And a whole bunch of them, about 10 or 15 kids. So, uh, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Now, if I asked you, who was the first person to hear that in the Bible? Who were the first people to hear that cry of the poor? And who would you say? Well, maybe Cain, because his brother killed him, right? And he was, uh, Cain, uh, Abel, both of them. Abel, first of all, sorry, Cain killed Abel. So maybe, um, maybe uh, Abel was crying out, you know, to God at that moment when he was being murdered by his brother. But maybe afterwards, Cain was crying out to God as well. And we wouldn't, we wouldn't necessarily immediately think of that. But the person who was very broken cries out to God as well. Even if they don't have words, they have sighs, they have sobs, they have tears, and they cry out to the Lord. And then there are surely more stories there, but we're still very early in scripture. We're in Genesis, the very first book. And we're just at the birth of Isaac. And he's weaning, probably three years old, right? Or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I need to go back and look at that detail. But, um, The Lord hears the cry of the poor. And another form of poverty just crossed my mind right now. Poor Hagar, you know? She's plagued by, by envy and jealousy. Jealousy, she only wants it for her child. And obviously there's been, in the light of things as revelation progressed, a big problem with, uh, the solution that Abraham tried to force and even even um, you know Sarah encouraged him and and said you go and take Hagar you know and have a child with her because uh, you know there's no hope with me so the inability to wait for God sometimes causes us to look for solutions that are really not the right solution and lots more problems come from that So actually last night when I was going through this reading, 
Uh, something that really astonished me was that God was with Ishmael as he grew up. It's such a pitiful scene. Hagar is driven away with her little boy and then she puts him at a distance because she has no more food. Abraham is heartbroken. There are lots of problems in these type of irregular family situations. Lots of suffering and people for all kinds of motivations engage in relationships with other people that don't have the long term view, that have the interest of the moment in mind. I must say, last night at Mass I comment about it. You might laugh at me now, so you're free to laugh at me, that's okay. But um, a few months ago there was a lady here, a pilgrim, and you know, they did the pilgrimage wonderfully and all the rest of it. And, and she said, I'm going to Ireland. Uh, my husband wants to golf with friends and and all the couples are going, but we're ladies, we're not really into that golf too much. We're going to do a tour of Ireland and can you give me some tips? So I spoke about some places, you know, and then about a month ago, or I forget how long exactly, more or less six weeks or whatever. So she's in Ireland and she sends me a message and she says, you know, we just had a concert last night in memory of uh, honoring Tina Turner. So my answer to her was, who is Tina Turner? So when I tell that to people now, everybody laughs at me. That's okay. So some things I'm not tuned into. And, and then during vacations, one of the discoveries I made was that this younger generation of brothers, and he's in his 40s now probably, you know, um, uh, they're really into rock music. And I never got into rock music. I'm sorry, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> and uh, he, he was very generous and he signed to be a driver for the van. He did most of the driving. And, and that's a burden, you know, that's a, a challenge. And, and sometimes he had issues also with, with uh, sleep. And, and so he says, uh, I need to hear, you know, some loud music to keep me awake. <laughs> and so we had a lot of fun in that little context and obviously a little dram dramatization, you know. Yeah, you know, there's all this noisy rock stuff. And I really must say I wasn't very learned about rock music, you know. So actually in the vacations I got actually a, a schooling in rock music. I even learned about Lady Gaga and another one I learned about was actually an 80 year old filled me in more on him was this guy from England, uh, Freddie something, Freddie, Freddie um, uh, Mercury. So I didn't know anything about Freddie Mercury and I never registered him. I was busy doing other things probably, whatever. So anyway, then I got into they were telling me this is a great song and this is a great song and and so I started to listen to some of the, the songs and, and I was particularly interested more in the lyrics than the listening because it's kind of very hard to hear some of this music and you can't understand the words. So then I discovered that there were so many songs about love, this incredible dimension of human life and relationships, but they were mostly frustrated love a million reasons to go, but just give me one reason to stay. And setting the rain afire, or the, the rain is burning a daily, you know? And so I ran into three or four of these from songs from different, different great rock artists. And I must say that I was stunned by the fact that this whole line of songs was of deep frustrated love, deeply frustrated, painfully frustrated love. And wondering how all that came about it was obviously the times of the emerging drug cultures and the abandonment of certain tracks of building solid family life. 
and really iconic songs of the pain of our times. It was a big discovery for me, I must say, and in a certain sense, very informative, very teaching, very insightful for me. Oh, wow, there's a huge raft being built here. Let's check it out. So, I found that uh, very astonishing. And you just see this pain as well, Abraham saying, gosh, if I only had waited for Isaac to be born. Like what's Abraham going through when he sees Sarah demanding that Ishmael must be sent away? And all the trouble with Lot, who was Abraham's nephew, in Lot's indecisiveness to do the right thing, in his self-centeredness, Abraham was so generous and said, you take the part you wish. I just want to have peace between us. And poor decisions are often made because of wrong motivations. And so much suffering is caused. But there was another thing that really impressed me about that reading about Lot. I'm not sure if we had it in the readings, but it's there in the chapters when you read about it in the Bible. And he's the father of two peoples that the Moabites and there was another one it said. And so I was astonished by that because, you know, these were peoples then that would be seen as enemies, even though David, his great grandmother was a Moabite. And that was a big, that was a hard deal for pious Jewish thinking that their greatest king could be descended from a Moabite. And that's all contained also in the genealogies of Jesus. So, you know, we have so much in common with so many people. And today's reading is amazing. First of all, it's Abraham's son. But the way God treats him, he says, I will make you a great nation. I will make him a great nation as well. And the last line of the reading, let me put it out for you. You just got to look at that reading. Like if you said, who is, if, if I would, oh gosh, I don't have the connection to the reading here. Uh, just wait for me a second, please. Okay, I got it. And it's the last line of today's reading. If I was to ask you, with which boy was God as he grew up in the Genesis story. And I think most of us would say with Isaac. But actually this line says here, even before I would ever say that about Isaac, it said, God was with the boy, Ishmael, as he grew up. God was with him. And how often we declare that God is with us and against the others. And that can happen within families, like it happens here, you know. And how can we declare that God is not with somebody? As much as they might even wander away from God. God can never not be with somebody. Like, okay, Sarah can get rid of Ishmael. Because it's not her child. But Abraham can't. He will always be Abraham's child. The great responsibility of paternity and maternity. Bring a child into the world. No matter what the dysfunctional problems that have developed there will always be that connection. And people live with so much regret for poor decisions, hasty decisions, decisions made for pleasure, decisions made for power, decisions made for greed. Oh, now I realize there's a whole bunch of kids camping out here and that's where the, the extra noise was coming. There's a bunch of kids here in sleeping bags, pretty sound asleep, and they're building this raft and actually there was a time here we saw 50 or 60 rafts and it was called Rhapsody. I'm not sure if they're going to be doing that right now but they build these rafts as team projects and they have them and they're racing across to get to the other side of the Sea of Galilee when the wind rises. So I try to keep an eye on this and give you an update if that's what we can we can show you live happening hopefully if we catch it. So there's a lot to chew on in the readings today. And the other interesting thing is right across from us, we have the memory of the pigs 
and the, the swine and the, the devil's been driven out and going into the swine and drowning in the lake. And, you know, when God comes into our lives, sometimes we say, God, get out of town. And that's what these guys do. Thereupon the whole town came out to meet Jesus and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their district. It's amazing how God respects our freedom. But we have no idea sometimes about the negative consequences of decisions we make in our autonomy. In our great celebration of our freedoms, we make very poor decisions sometimes that have lots of effects afterwards. But God is always with everybody to the end because every one of us are children of God. And Abraham has a lot of children today. And we need to pray for greater reconciliation between Abraham's children. Abraham, our father in the faith. That's how we celebrate him in the liturgy. Our father, Abraham. Let's leave it like that for today. It looks like the video held up today. So, God bless you. See you later, alligators. Oh, what's going on here? I just wanted to do my little selfie moment. <sighs> Goodbye. God bless you.